Good evening, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And tonight we are in Romans 3, 9 through 31 for our Twilight Talks on Romans. We're going to take about five or ten verses apiece. Tyler? Uh, what then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that all are written under that all are under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps, asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Go ahead. Okay. Ruin and misery are in their paths. and the way of peace they have not known, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, even though they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance God has passed over the sins that were previously committed, to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Whereas boasting then, it is excluded. By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Or is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. All right. Here's the short version. Romans 3.23. I mean, it'd, it'd be nice if they would have made Romans 3.22 and 23 just one verse. Because what's it say there? The righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus for all who believe, for there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Jews. You're damned and going to hell. Gentiles, you're damned and going to hell. Okay, that kind of settles it. That's everybody. That's everybody. So all this racial garbage, all this sexism, all this economicism, all this junk, right, that, that people try and throw out there to try and level the playing field, you can quit. Because what did it say very early on? And I love that we sing this song, but almost no one knows what where the actual... You realize the only time in Scripture that this phrase occurs is in this Old Testament passage and that that's quoted in Romans. Um, there is no one who is righteous. No, not one. But what about no, not one? We're all sinful. We all deserve eternal damnation. We all should go to hell forever. <gasps> Don't say that. That doesn't make my self-esteem feel good. Too bad, so sad. Get over it. I'm not the one who said it. He said, no, not one. He said, everyone is equally condemned, Jew and Gentile, because no one, no one, Everyone has come short of the glory of God. That means everyone has failed miserably. Now, some people, oh, that just makes me feel so bad. I don't know about you, dude. Once I know that we are all bad, that we are all deserving of hell, and that we are all on the same playing field, and that playing field is damned, condemned, destined for hell dude from that place up that's it i only got one place to go that's up 
I don't have to be like the Jews. I don't have to be like, I only have to be like one thing. Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's it. <gasps> no one can be like Jesus. Then, then you know what? Slap the Holy Spirit for saying that, that, that we should imitate Paul like Paul imitated Jesus the Christ. Slap the Holy Spirit for saying that the same mind that was in Christ Jesus is the same mind that should be in us. <gasps> no, you can't say that about the I'm not the one who's challenging the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm saying if you're going to argue and say we can't be like Jesus, then you just called the Holy Spirit a liar. People don't get it. Blaspheming the Holy Spirit is when you call the Holy Spirit a liar and say he's the devil. I never said that. True or false? The devil is the father of? Lies. Lies. And the devil is a? Liar. And every lie that has ever been originates with? The devil. The devil. So the moment that God says, this is what we should be, and when Jesus tells us to be like him, and when the entire book of Hebrews tells us to be like him, and all these other things tell us to imitate Jesus. And the moment you say, I, I can't be like Jesus. Okay, so the Holy Spirit said all this. And the Holy Spirit, true or false, the Holy Spirit tells us to do stuff that we cannot do. False. That'd be false. If the Holy Spirit says, Tyler, to be saved, you must climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Then it would be possible for everybody on the planet to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, he doesn't tell us that. He just tells us to repent and be baptized for the remission of our sins. That's what he told Peter to tell everybody on the day of Pentecost. So the moment I start to argue with what the Word of God says, do you realize in that moment I'm calling the Holy Spirit a liar? Especially when I go, yeah, no, I can't be that. I can't do that. I can't obey that. I can't become that, even though God says we can placed yourself against God's Holy Spirit and you said that the Holy Spirit is lying. <gasps> no, no, I didn't intend to. Too late. Right. See, you did it in ignorance. Mm -hmm. See, this is, this is the kind of stuff that people don't like to hear from their preacher. This is the kind of stuff you need to hear from your preacher. Every time you argue with the, with the Word of God, you're arguing to your own soul's destruction. Because what did the Jew always argue with? The Word. Mm -hmm. The entire Old Testament is filled with them saying, God is bad, God is faithless. We haven't done anything he said because no one can do it. Therefore, we're going to go after false gods. And God's, oh, well, yeah, how well did that work out? And we're going to be miserable the entire time because we're not listening to God. Yeah. They always fought with God. And they won every time. No. No. Not even close. You and I as Christians, Romans 8 says, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So it's high time we get back out there and start conquering. Mm -hmm. It's high time we quit being the no-not ones and we start to realize that because of faith in Christ Jesus and because of the faith of Christ Jesus, that you and I are able to operate in the law of faith, not the law of works, and that we are able to achieve the mission, plans, and purposes of God in our life and in the church, in the world, for his glory, our benefit, and the salvation of souls. Thank God we're all equally damned until we come to faith in Jesus Christ and thank God that everyone who wants to can be saved and be part of his work now and forever. Anything you want to add? No, sir. All right. With that, we bid you good night. Tell them when we'll see them again, Lord willing. We will see them Sunday morning at 930 for our Bible class, either on the live stream or in person, and at 1030 for our morning worship service at the Lake Butler Church of Christ in Lake Butler, Florida. Until then. Have a good weekend.